Hi there. In this video, we'll take a look at the difference in temperatures and clock speeds achievable between the stock cooler that came with the Ryzen 1600 and the Master Liquid 240. The motherboard is ASRock AB350M Pro 4 with the Corsair Vengeance LPX3200 RAM. In the previous video, we took a look at how well the ASRock AB350M Pro 4 was able to overclock the CPU and if it was the bottleneck. We also wanted to see if we could achieve 3200 MHz speeds on the RAM. After updating the BIOS to version 2.4, all you had to do was to switch to the XMP profile in the BIOS and we achieved 3200 MHz. You can watch my previous video about overclocking and the voltages with this build. Before we begin, I want to mention an even cheaper motherboard. It's the ASRock AB350M. It's not the Pro 4 version that I have here, but it's only $63. You'll be able to achieve the exact same overclocks and RAM speeds. The differences are the price is $63 versus $80, one less PCIe slot, one less M.2 slot, but it keeps the fast one and loses the one that operates at SATA 3 speed, and you get a total of two RAM slots for a maximum capacity of 32 gigabytes instead of the 64 we have on the Pro 4 version of this motherboard. Other than that, everything else is the same. And if you're in the market for an extremely affordable motherboard, I highly recommend this one. I got to mention one more thing here. In the previous video, I mentioned that I bought two case fans made by Cooler Master. Now, I ended up changing those with the two Noctua fans I have in the case now, and I just found those laying around because they were somewhat noisy. They sounded like a scooter at a distance. I'm not very sensitive to noise usually and I sit about six feet away from my computer, but these kind of bothered me. I do not recommend them. I've been running my Ryzen 1600 with the stock cooler and I was comfortably getting 3.8 gigahertz with uh, 1.35 volts and it ran great, no problems but I wanted to get the best overclock on the ASRock AB350M without the temperatures becoming an issue. So I opted for an all-in-one water cooling system and got the Master Liquid 240 by Cooler Master. Now without any more delay, let's look at some numbers now. As we see here with the stuck cooler, the Ryzen 1600 at 3.9 GHz at 1.35 volts reached 88 degrees after just 5 minutes of stress testing with the CPU-Z and the temperatures were just keep rising towards the 90s so I just stopped it there. On the other hand, with the Master Liquid, after 30 minutes of CPU-Z stress test at 4 GHz with 1.3875 volts applied, the temperatures would settle at 65 degrees with a maximum temperature of 68. That is at least 20 degrees difference and keep in mind that is 3.9 GHz with the stock cooler versus 4 GHz with the master liquid. With the stock cooler 3.9 GHz, the idle temperatures were between 30 to 40 degrees and with the master liquid it was anywhere from 25 to 40 degrees. With the new cooler in place, I was able to get 4 GHz and I achieved that speed at 1.38725 volts on the CPU. After removing the cooler bottleneck, now we can truly see the potential of this board. After all said and done, the Cinebench score I was able to get at 4.0 GHz and 3200 MHz on the RAM was 1342, which I think is really good. Now that we removed all the bottlenecks, I went ahead and made a chart showing you guys the Cinebench score differences from stock settings all the way to the maximum settings. Out of the box, if you don't change anything in the BIOS, the Cinebench score was 1129. Now when we upped the RAM speed to 3200 and keeping the CPU at stock, the score went up to 1150. That's a difference of 21 points. I skipped the CPU settings between the stock settings and up to 3.8 GHz because I'm confident almost everybody will be able to hit 3.8 GHz with their Ryzen chips. So it's more relevant to just start at 3.8. At 3.8 GHz with 1.325 volts on the CPU, RAM set at 2133 MHz. 
the score is 1232. Now, if we bump the CPU speed to 3.9 GHz, which I was able to achieve at 1.35625 volts, and up the ramp speed to 3200 MHz, the score goes up to 1310. Now that's a big jump, almost 80 points difference. At 4 GHz, which I was able to achieve with 1.3875 volts on the CPU, and the RAM set at 2133, the score is identical to 3.9 GHz on the CPU with the RAM set at 3200 MHz. Finally, when everything is turned up, the score is 1342. So the difference between the stock settings and everything turned up to 10, which is 4 GHz on the CPU and 3200 MHz on the RAM, the score difference is 210 points in Cinebench. Now that's a big difference. At the end, was it worth buying a $90 water cooler? In practice, no. I would have been perfectly fine at 3.8 GHz with the stock cooler and probably wouldn't have even felt the difference. But I was set out to satisfy my curiosity and find out what this dirt cheap motherboard was capable of doing and now that we found even a cheaper motherboard which can achieve the same results, you can build a really good system for really cheap with the Ryzen CPUs and ASRock AB350 motherboards. So what's next? Well, I'm going to update the BIOS to 2.5 and see if I can manually overclock the RAM to speeds higher than 3200 MHz. We'll see the results in the next video. And that's it for today. I hope this video was helpful to someone. See you in the next video.